Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scary Stuff. This is episode number three. Ah! Oh, had some scary stuff right there. Hello, and welcome to Scarred Cast, or Scary Stuff, episode three. It's, it's been a, quite a while since I sat down. I had about 40 minutes recorded of episode 3, and then there was technical issues, so it got lost in the warp. So, I've been around, I've been doing a whole bunch of stuff, let's get started with the questions. The 6,000 subscriber contest giveaway video went up, um, so make sure you check that out, I'll put a link down below if you haven't. Two out of the three people who already, who won, already contacted me, so make sure you check out that video to get your stuff that I'll be shipping off soon. Now something I realized is I have to keep these within about half a, half an hour. So let's get started. Lots of questions, like a hundred questions. So I will be brief, I will try get through them all, and if not, just leave a question down below if you'd like to be a part of this. I've been working very hard, there hasn't been as many battle reports, but I'm working on some Age of Sigmar stuff, my Tomb Kings will be getting some love, and uh, I've played a couple of games uh, with the new rule set, uh, keeping on top of the tactical videos, I'm going to be doing all the Eldar ones to get you guys some content, because I know you're craving it, and I'm craving sharing my thoughts with you as well. Running your own business keeps you busy. So, <clears throat> um, Andrei Kostilev, how many points do you have a Dark Elder? Uh, about 10,000 points. Lots of Dark Elder. Thanks for your question. Um, Darby Fox, uh, just giving him a shout out. Darby Fox Conway, check him out. Um, and he asks, what books outside of 40k books have you enjoyed reading? Um, Shogun, uh, so Tom Clancy, is it Tom Clancy? I don't know who he is. But any of the Shogun series, any of the Sharp novels and Hornblower novels, um, Lord of the Rings, of course, The Hobbit, you know, good old Tolkien. And that's it, really. Nothing else except for, like, the Horus Heresy series. That's all 40k stuff. But thank you for your question. War Games. Check out this guy's uh, YouTube channel. He has He's running a store. He just got started. Give him some love. Check him out. He's running a contest right now for his 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Where he's giving out like a, you know, 180 quid worth of stuff. So check him out. Um, question is, he's opening a game store and wants to grow his channel out alongside the store. So he'd like advice on gaining subscribers. Also, uh, what can I offer subs outside of the UK who I cannot sell to? Um, so, in terms of gaining subs, make sure you have a schedule and you stick to it. Um, so, battle report on Thursdays, painting on Tuesdays, um, box reviews of games on Friday nights, and I don't. It doesn't matter what it is. Stay consistent with it, and like that, people get into the habit of expecting your videos, and. Um, what can you offer subs that you can't sell to? Um, online resources, really. Tacticas, painting guides, I guess, would be my my easiest guess. Um, if you want to, like, get make some money off them. Um, or just patronage, you know, if they want to be a patron and then give them a t-shirt or send, send them stuff that has War Games logos all over it. So, that's that. Thank you for your, for your um, question, um, War Games. So, next, Treasonous Bastard, great name by the way, congrats on 6k, thanks for the video, um, no problem, you're very welcome. Could you give us some thoughts on Skitari Cult Mechanicus, particularly Skitari? Um, it doesn't see how you're planning to play them, but uh, you know, and you don't like doing tactics in depth for stuff you haven't used. But I think your insights are excellent, and I'd appreciate some speculative commentary. So, treasonous bastard. Um, I like the Skitari and Cult Mechanicus. I'm a big fan. The models look phenomenal, so check them out. 
Um, and recently at the Bay Area Open, uh, Jeff in control Robinson, he went uh, second place with a, like a Cult Mechanicus like list. So, you know, check it out. Like it's, it's there, it's powerful, it's got lots of good combinations and synergy uh, within the game itself. A lot of mechanics that kind of throw people off. And I think that it's one of those wrench, wrench kind of armies that you wouldn't expect because they're so new, uh, you know, they haven't been widespread. So keep an eye out for them, practice with them. Let me know what you think in the comments because I'd love to know insights of anybody who has used them and what they're finding is working and is not working. But thank you for your question, treasonous bastard. Um, Jack Bandy asks, question, which spam list do you like more, Raider spam or Venom spam? I uh, used to like Venom Spam more, now moving more to Raider Spam. I like bigger units, I like Splinter Axe, I've, I've fallen in love with Splinter Axe, but I like having about one Venom for every 500 points in your army, as it still gives you that volume of firepower, they're small, they can be hidden, and people are still wary of them because they're quite nasty. But thanks for your question. Idik Beer. Ah, I always wondered about your accent. You're welcome, sir. Um, you want a shout out? Awesome. Follow Idik Beer. Uh, he's got a great YouTube channel, barrel reports, painting stuff, contests, tutorials. Go give him a look. You know, Idik Beer, Eldar, Necrons, Tyranids. He's doing a big Space Wolf thing this year. So check him out. He, I love, there's one of the channels that I started watching that inspired me to do this channel. So. I'd highly recommend you checking him out. And uh, my question is, when was the last time you were in the UK, if ever? Um, I'd say about 10 years ago. It's quite a while ago. I can't wait to go back. When I do, Warhammer World and everybody's invited. And we'll have a big, scary party and it'll be great. We'll wear costumes and, and paint each other's faces and drink non-alcoholic drinks. <laughs> So, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for your question, Idik Beer. Tactica Imperialis. I like this guy's channel, so make sure you check it out too. He's got a lot of cool little like excerpts, little tactical things, um, short and sweet, straight to the point. Um, so check his channel out. Um, uh, do you need to speak or learn French in Canada, or is there another population of French Canadians in your area? Um, although Canada is, leg uh, is legally a bilingual country, only New Brunswick is officially totally bilingual, Quebec mainly speaks French, I live in Ontario which is very Anglican unless you go some places far north so people speak English around here, but thank you for your question um, Andy Mort what's your favourite army faction to play against? It depends, I much prefer playing against people than playing against particular armies I think that answers that, answer that question. I don't care what army you play, as long as you're not an asshole. Pardon my French. And, you know, that's it. Um, <laughs> see French, I do speak some. Um, Hot Duck 101. Question number one. Are you a member of the Dark City Forum? Yes, I am Skari on the Dark City Forum. Do I have a project log? Yes. Cabal of the Deadly Mist. Um... I mentioned I was interested in 30k, did I? I don't remember. Uh, if I were to start collecting, what legion would I choose? Probably Nurgle, so Death Guard, yeah. Um, always loved the the look of the Nurgle army ever since the second edition Chaos book. I thought I had it around here, but I uh, loved it, yeah. Thanks for your question, Hot Duck. Um, I like to color red. I was wondering about loadout for Scourge. Um, what would you use? Well, I would use four haywire blasters against tanks and four splinter cannons against infantry. Depends on what your local met is, but I've recently been using the four haywire blasters and um, oh man, I cannot believe I haven't been using them sooner. Uh, I just didn't have the models all done up for it. So yes, they were putting like three to four hull points on a tank a turn and it was just them trying to roll cover saves or whatever to try and stop the tank from just crumbling to death. So that was pretty cool. Uh, Heiwa Blasters are my first choice. Because you've got Venoms and Splinter Rifles that do anti-infantry, so 
you need anti-tank in the list. Thank you for your question, though. Um, Tim Otep, do I like pancakes or waffles? Both. Thank you for your question. Winters SEO. Winters SEO. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel. Fantastic battle reports. He will soon, you know, go on top of me in terms of um, subscribers because his battle reports are amazing. They're all painted. There's a lot of Forge World. They're very like striking Scorpion esque, but without the long drawn outness of like an hour. So I can watch them, which is great. So yeah, check him out. Um, he's got some questions. Um, what with painting, reading, posting vids, this hobby sometimes pushes my wife to a limit of her patience. Question. How does your significant other get on with all this toy soldiers stuff? And number two, why did you start a channel? What were your motivations? And number three, where do you see the channel going? What's the goal? More importantly, what is the dream? Thank you for your question, Winters. So I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on this. I'm checking the time every time just because um, my camera will only record about 30 minute increments. The last time I spoke for about 40 minutes, I mean for about an hour, only to figure this out after I'd been speaking to myself for 30 minutes. So um, not doing that mistake again. So number one, um, she lets me do it as long as it doesn't go overboard because I've got to spend time with the family and with my son who's three now and he's awesome so he, you know, my son's napping right now I did some work around the house and now I get to do the video so you know it's like you know I just I just split up my time to do different things why did I start the channel um, mostly to do battle reports that didn't have proxies in them and that were short enough to watch so that was like my inspiration um, I really wanted to do something people could watch. It was quick, it was easy, and there was a little bit of tactica involved with it so that people could kind of learn the game as well. What's the goal? Where do you see the channel going? Um, I see the channel expanding to the point where, yeah, I can make a little bit of extra money off of it. The biggest thing I don't want to do is I don't want to charge a subscription for watching videos that I like producing for free. Um, but... Um, I would love to justify dedicating as much time as physically possible to this, which I love, and I cannot wait to just throw, you know, content your guys' way. Um, but of course, we need to eat and make money and, and pay bills. So right now, um, you know, building my business is the biggest thing. We do marketing, promotion, direct sales, that sort of stuff. And th this has kind of been put on the wayside, so it's more of still a hobby for me. So I really appreciate all you guys that watch, like, subscribe, and share that really kind of show that you care what I'm doing. I might start a patronage account to get patrons that, you know, will get some perks like t-shirts and whatnot. I just need some capital to do that first and then be able to kind of create a, a, like a, a, a machine that would grow. Um, you know, and I and people would be able to donate what they can, and you know, like that, I could justify setting so many hours of my day or so many hours of my week to creating dedicated content or painting and getting like a st couple of studio armies up and running, and really buying some new equipment and maybe refurbishing or finishing the terrain, just stuff like that. You know, that would require some financial incentive. You know, and I just don't want to put any imposition on you guys who watch and who enjoy and who like what I'm doing. So any suggestions on your end in terms of that or you know, what would you like to see would be great because um, I really want this to be a very community driven channel um, with a lot of um, things for you guys but that I enjoy doing um, for you guys if that makes any sense. But thanks a lot Winters SEO. I love your channel by the way. Okay. Um, Tomaz Data asked pretty much the same question. How do you manage time-wise when it comes to work-life hobby balance? I work about 70 to 80 hours a week. I spend about, you know, the rest of my time with my family. And in between, I do little things um, with the hobby. So about one game a week or every two weeks. Um, to try and film it, this sort of video. You know, right now I've been rebasing all my Tomb Kings for the, Lord, for the Age of Sigmar, etc., etc. 
Um, so it's just good time management is what it comes down to, and a couple of small sacrifices here or there. But thank you for your question. Um, Matthew McCormick, I'm Ron Burgundy. Mm, I, maybe. <laughs> but good reference, I appreciate it. Um, Mammoth Painting Studio, check out their channel. Uh, if you could have a piece of Dark Eldar technology equipment, what would it be? Um, regrowth? If I could just die and get regrown, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. That or a shadow field. That would be kind of cool too. Fickle, but cool. Um, that, thank you for your question. Um, William Flack, do you have a Daka Daka account? Yes. Scardcast or Scari. I think it's Scari. Maybe Scardcast, but check it out. I put videos on there all the time. Um, on the battle report section. But yes, I do have a Daka Daka account. Um, Jason Pryor, 30k army, what would it be? Uh, Death Guard. I answered that before, but thank you for your question, Jason. Scott, good day, Skari. Why Dark Eldar of all the armies you could choose? I've answered this question before, just because nobody said I could and everybody thought they sucked, so I had to prove everybody wrong and destroy them and take them all as my slaves. I love that answer, by the way. Thank you for your question, Scott. Um, Toxith O'Grady, is your hand? Why is your handle Scary? Was that your real name? Um, my handle is Scary because my Tomb King originally was Tomb King Scary, and it just kind of went from there. And now it's Archon Scary, and I'm just Scary, and this is Scarred Cast, and you're watching Scary stuff. So don't be don't be too scarred for life about anything you see here but thank you for your question um stoner steve do i like stuff mm, on in moderation but yes i do like stuff thomas mertens um would you do a video showcase of your tomb king's army uh please and if you could GW made rules for Fantasy and 40k the same, so you could play all the combinations of armies against each other. What would it be? So I will do a tomb. I have a video because I'm doing Age of Sigmar. You will get to see all my Tomb Kings. Uh, that's on my list of things to do. And um, if I could play all the combinations of armies against each other, I would probably want to play like Dark Elves because they're exactly like Dark Eldar against anything else. Preferably Space Marines, which are now like the Thunder Sigmarites. Maybe that'll happen either way, because it's like playing 40k anyway. <laughs> so, that's the question. Thanks for watching by the way, I really appreciate your question, Thomas. Um, Rota Fury. Hey Skari, great video. Um, wanted to ask which of your favorite sub-faction is Dark Eldar? Which cult, cabal, um, um, which cult Coven Cabal. I like the Cabal, to be honest. Just a good old gang of guys that goes out and takes slaves, you know, with the support of a cult or a coven. You know, but Cabal, that's like, that's where my heart lies. Um, what is your favorite conversion that you have seen or done yourself? Um, my favorite conversion that I've done is got to be my Raider that's based on a Tantalus design from the Forge World. I finally primed it, so I'll be painting it soon. Um, but that's probably my favorite conversion that I have physically done. It was great fun. I've been working on it for years. Thank you for your question, Road to Fury. Um, Matthew Harris. How do you feel Incubi versus Grotesques? Uh, pros and cons. Uh, I know you use Grotesque all the time, but Striking Scorpion has two units of Incubi. Just wanted your um, opinion as you are the Dark Eldar expert. I am the Dark Eldar expert. Thank you for coming to Scardcast. Give me your soul. Um, I really like Grotesque because they're tough, and Dark Eldar aren't tough. And grotesques are fantastic. They go in, they beat stuff up, they take a lot of hits, they usually die anyway, but your people kind of can't, can't comprehend that they're such a tough unit that can dish out so much damage. 
Now as for Incubi, Incubi are more surgical. You go in, you kill a unit, but they're a lot more fragile, so you have to work with them a little bit smarter. That's why he's using two units, because he can put pressure on different parts of the game. Now, I recently used, in a battle, battle and I didn't film it, but it was nine Incubi with a Clavex and a Homunculus, and they just ripped everything they touched to shreds, and it was awesome and really fun. So, just very different, but I really just feel that it would be up to you. My opinion and my suggestion is use what you think you'd appreciate the aesthetics and painting more. Because if you get it painted, it looks cool, and you'll have a lot more fun playing with it anyway. But thanks for your question, Matthew. I appreciate it. Um, mm -mm -mm. 3 3 Clay Dog. What made you play Dark Elder? I answer that question. And what weapons does your Revenant have? The dirty, dirty D templates. Yes, and I'm still working on my Revenant. It's going to be amazing, and I'm making a tutorial for all you guys to see how I built it. So I highly recommend you stay tuned for that. Uh, Bruno Baker, big fan. Um, do, 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 do. I already answered that question. Mm -mm -mm. Sam Hutzler, what advice can you give to people who are hoping to start their own channel? So, if, you're, if you are an aspiring YouTuber, find something you enjoy, find a format that's easy for you to do, so that even if you need to spend some time doing it, you're not going to be like, oh my god, I have to do it, and just be consistent. I don't, it doesn't matter if it's once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, just be consistent. Like, I've slacked off on that, and of course my subscription has kind of gone down because I haven't been consistent because of work. You know, life gets in the way sometimes. But every time I sit down to do a video, I know what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, how long it's going to take me to edit just because I've been doing it for so long. And I highly recommend that you just do it. Just, just get it done. Just put something up there. Put it on a forum to kind of create some hype. Just, and then people will watch and sub if they appreciate your content. That's my suggestion to you. Um, Paynton Wild asks, How many slaves have you taken for the Dark Kin? Many, many slaves. I've been playing Dark Eldar for years. I don't keep track. But I'm looking very healthy, as you can see, because I suck them all into me. And their pain fuels my, my life. <laughs> can you tell I've been playing them for a long time? I love it. Thank you for your question. So, The Dark Artisan says, I love your channel and you got me into playing Dark Eldar. I'm so sorry. <laughs> My army has grown a lot and I await your videos each week. Um, check my channel out. I have checked your channel out. I like it. Um, check out The Dark Artisan's channel. Does some battle reports. So, you know, go. I really enjoy his battle reports. They're really, really fun. Um, and he's been doing quite a few different things with his battle reports. So, check them out. Um... And, you know, tell me how the tournament went, by the way. I'm not sure if you sent me that that Facebook message. But best of luck to you. Check out the channel. The Dark Artisan. Okay. Thank you for your question. Gus the Hut. Dark Elder have been neglected by Forge World in the past. What kind of models would you like to see them produce in the future? Um, different kind of beasts for the Beast Pack. I think would be really fun. I think that would be the best so far. Yeah. Thank you for your question, Gus. Ayurcade. Skari, what if any 40k fiction do you enjoy the most? Series or author? Dan Abnett and um, any of the books that he has written are fantastic. Um, I really enjoyed some of the omnibuses, like the like the Space Marine one or the Galaxy of Flames one. Had a lot of little short stories in them. And then, of course, The Path of the Incubi, Andy Chambers phenomenal series. Check it out, especially if you play Dark Elder. It's worth every penny. Thank you, ARK. Brandon Lemus says, First off, Skari, I'm someone who's building a Dark Elder army myself. I find your videos to be an invaluable resource. You're welcome. It helps me plan out what units I want to take and how they may perform. So my question is two-part. One, do you see yourself ever getting into a more competitive scene with Dark Elder, and what sort of army would you bring if you did? So, my question will be twofold. Yes, I do. I'd love going to tournaments. 
I just kind of transitioned into running tournaments more than playing in tournaments because of my work. Uh, but I'd love to do a year or two of just going to any and all GTs that I could possibly go to. So that's one of my long-term goals. And what sort of army would you bring? To be honest, I would bring a painted army first. Um, that would be my main stipulation. And one that is just just balanced. I don't like spam, but I like, like a combination of things to throw people off guard that shoots a lot, requires a lot of movement, has some things to you know kick stuff in combat, uses probably Eldar allies, because Eldar allies are fantastic for Dark Eldar, and um, just a lot of practice. So whatever list I choose, I would just practice a lot with it and get really, really good with it. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to take a little break, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we are back. Thank you for your question, Brandon. Really appreciate it. So, Alex Janeway says, I've got a question, Skari. I've seen people use fantasy bull ogres, rat ogres, and crypt horrors to, with Talos and Kronos bits to make grotesques. Have you seen any of these in person? How do they compare in size and look? I use ogres for one of my units. They're exactly the same size and they look great. So, whatever's cheaper for you, just get it done because the grotesques are awesome and a homunculus would care not whence the flesh came from. They would just mold it into something that they would like. Uh, thank you for your question, Alex. Uh, Wolf, Wolfie Gaming, have you ever played Blood Angels? Um, no, I have never played Blood Angels. I have a Space Marine army of Black Templars though, which are very close combat team. And that's, and I like them. They're good, they're fun. They were my original army. But thanks for your question. Baron Vaclav, hey Skari, I have a question. We'll, me and my friend will be hosting our first tournament this year with seven tables. We'd like to ask for some tips on what to do and what not to do. Okay, so when you're running a tournament, have a schedule set up. Make sure your rulings are final. Make sure there's enough terrain on the tables. And make sure that you follow your schedule. And make sure that you have decent prizes for everybody involved and don't be discouraged about pissing people off because you will never make everyone happy. I've run a variety of different tournaments. Just do what you think will be fun and people that come to your tournament will, should know exactly what they're walking into because you should have a set up layout of what to expect from people who go to your tournament and if they're going to a tournament, they should know what to expect. I personally use the ITC format with a few modifications sometimes so check them out, Frontline Gaming, ITC format. It's growing, especially if you're running a tournament, very cookie cutter, FAQ'd, you know, stringent army list building rules so that you know, everybody is on the same page, and that's important. But enjoy it, and let me know how it goes. I'd really like to know. By the way, if anybody has any questions, leave them in the comments down below, check out the Facebook page, like the channel, sub the channel, share the channel. Thank you so much. Okay, next question. Ruggiero Losardo for the question there's a lot of stuff gravitating around the dark, core Dark Eldar book and it's become difficult to know what, what, what works, works best in the army I'm a new player, I can't decide whether I should try allying with Harlequin, Harlequins, Eldar or Coven, any advice? I like just if you're a newer player I really enjoy allying with Eldar or Coven just because you know with Coven you get some nice beefy stuff that won't die too quickly and, but with Eldar, honestly, Eldar is like fail safe proof. Like, Eldar are amazing, and regardless of what you choose, it'll be a good choice because Eldar are awesome. So, you know, yeah, that's what I would recommend. But thanks for your question. So, Quinn, sir, question What's your favorite dice color? Um, white, blue, green. If it has six sides and I can roll it, I don't care. <laughs> Thanks for your question, though. How can I share the video if I don't have a Facebook page? Um, post it on your favorite forum. Um, post it on Google+, Plus, on Pinterest, on I don't care, like any social media. Just share it. Tell people that I exist. I'd appreciate it. Thank you for your question. Russian name that I don't understand. Question. What do you think about Imperial Armor Vehicles of the Dark Eldar? Maybe you want to see something new there for your army. 
Um, I like the Tantalus and I like the the Ravager looking one. The old flyer, I have one. Mm, it looks like a Batmo plane. Uh, would I like to see anything new? Yeah, it'd be really cool to see like a slave barge or something that could go around and like, you know, had like a cage on it, you know, and they'd literally grab people and like stuff them in this cage. That'd be kind of cool. Um, Steve Kruger, based on the direction of the fluff, what do you think the most logical progression for 40k is? Doom! <laughs> We're just about to be doomed! But that's the same storyline that's happened for 30 years. So that would be the most logical progression. <laughs> uh, thanks for your question, Steve. Francisco Rodriguez. Um, I play in Brazil. Awesome. I don't have a Games Workshop store to see or play games. Question is Scourge. Don't see much in our games. Um, gorgeous models. How do you use them? And why don't you use them more often? Okay, so... Um, you would use them for anti-tank and the reason I don't use them is because I didn't have the models painted I don't like using unpainted models so thanks for your question um, George Bradshaw what are me next I'm going to be rebasing all my black templars maybe working on them a bit but I really like focusing on my armies that I have right now because of time constraint and financial constraint Dark Eldar Tomb Kings, Black Templars, that's it. No glitz, no glam, no glory. Focused, get better, become good at one thing. That's it. But thank you for your question. Um, Joshua Anderson, what does your wife, girlfriend, think of your hobby? Um, well, I answered that question a couple of times. Um, she's painted with me before. She pretends that it doesn't exist but she understands that it's something that I like doing and that I that I enjoy. So she's awesome that way. Hey Skari, what would be your approach to a pure cabal, not coven, no witch related or homunculi, 1850 point ITC format list? A pure cabalite list? Well, Lamian, Venom, Lamian, Venom. Um, and then I'd run two units of ten Cabalite Warriors and Splinter Rack Raiders. Two units of, ten, of five Cabalite Warriors with Blasters and Venoms. Uh, two units of Trueborn with Blasters and Venoms. Two units of Scourge, well, Scourge or Cabalite, but, you know, I guess you could say they're not Reaver. And then I'd take the Ravagers, because you'd have to take Ravagers. And since you can't take Razor Wings, Void Ravens, or anything else, because that's, like, Witch Cult, then just raiders for fast attack, just to get more lances on the board, or venoms to get more lances on the board, and then just mix and pick and choose, and you know, make sure you upgrade one of your sergeants to be the warlord, and that's it really. So just a whole bunch of stuff. It's very boring and dull to play an all cabal cabal list, but um, that's what I would run, and then it's just waves and waves of MSU stuff. Go, my little minions and kill stuff. Thank you for your question. LOL Chaos. So, Steven Esven. As a Blood Angel player, I feel the Codex was underwhelming with all the formations and detachments that other armies can get. Do you think Blood Angels and Space Marines should have detachments and formations like that? Well, Space Marines recently got updated, and they do. And Blood Angels, meh, they have some really cool stuff. So, you know, just play with what you got. Like that's pretty much the, the you know I don't I don't pretend I'm a game designer I literally just grab what's there and use it it's less brain power that I have to use but thank you for your question Stephen okay Ellen Stringer what will your next Dark Eldar purchase be and also what paint and glues do you suggest also could you please give out a shout out to me Facebook page Eldritch Painting um so, check out Eldritch Painting, Ellen Stringer's um, Facebook page. Eldritch Painting. I use GW Paints, and I use... Well, right now I've been using Gale Force 9 Super Glue, but uh, really any Super Glue, I literally go to the dollar store and buy Super Glue at the dollar store. 
and it works just as well as any other crazy expensive super glue. Um, and what would be my next Dark Eldar purchase? To be honest, I don't think I would buy anything else. Because I have pretty much one unit of everything in the book. And it's just a matter of getting it painted. So that is my focus right now. Painting stuff that I own. But thank you for your question, Ellen. The Crimson Orc asks, Dark Eldar for an Apocalypse game. This is a crazy idea. If I was going to feel 3,000 points, what theme should I bring around? What model should I bring considering the opponent's big tanks? The formation. Just build as many of the Dark Eldar formations as possible and milk the heck out of the fact that you can literally deep strike everything in the Dark Eldar book. So, when you're playing Apocalypse, you can literally go first because you can bid 20 seconds or 5 seconds for deployment and not deploy anything. Then you take the strategic card that says any unit that deep strikes does not scatter and then proceeding in your first turn you bring all your vehicles and anything that can deep strike in turn one with no scatter exactly where you need them to be and crush your opponent in a lightning quick strike. That's what I would do. But thank you for your question Crimson Orc. Joseph Goldbaum what do you think the best unit in the Dark Eldar Codex is? Uh, which do you feel has the best fluff? Best unit? Mandrakes. The reason I say that is because I don't really think there's a best unit. Every unit has a place in the army. It depends on how you use it in your particular list. So make sure you practice. Which do you feel has the best fluff? Um, doesn't matter really. I like the fluff of the Reaver jet bikes because they're kind of cuckoo and they'll like kill themselves running around in circles like old Roman chariot horse racing. It's kind of cool. Um, but they're neat. But thank you for your question, Joseph. Deadshot788. Hey Pete, how's it going, buddy? Um, what's my favorite Primark? Um, which Forger model for the Primarchs do I like the most? I really like Gulliman, like the Primark of the, the, um, the, the Ultramarines because the paint job was phenomenal. The model looks really like Greco-Roman, and I think that's pretty cool. That's my and my favorite Primarch would have to be Night Haunter, because he's just nasty. Yeah, very scary stuff. So House of Geek, hey Scary, um, whereabouts from the UK do you live? I live in Canada. Do I like tea? Yes. What's your favorite biscuit? A tea biscuit. Um, I'm starting starting my own channel, saving for a camcorder. Any pointers on making videos? Practice, so it doesn't get all shaky. Um, I've started some Dark Eldar reviews. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, House of Geek. Check out his channel when he gets his channel up and running, bigger and stronger. Thanks for your question. So, Charlie Ball, if you had to choose between which Dark Eldar faction you could be, Cabalite, Witch, Arena, Cult, or Homunculus, what one would you be? Cabalite, pretty straightforward. Um, Andrew Kirk, if you were to put together a fluffy battle inside Comra, what special rules would you add to the battle? Um, very political stuff, like backstabbing your ally in the middle of the battle, or trying to get your friend's general killed. Um, that's kind of like what I would do, and thanks for saying thanks. Thank you, Andrew. Another Andrew, this time Andrew Charlton. Um, as a Dark Eldar player, you're in a similar position to me as a Space Wolf player. It seems GW was toning down all the codexes after 7th, and now everything is going crazy. I paraphrase that, by the way. Um, I find myself having to turn the same unit, six, and you know, what would you do sort of thing. Um, don't sweat it. Dark Eldar, Space Wars, we had like the oldest codexes in existence. Um, you know, just keep it up, play your game, have some fun, paint your models, and create a cool story, and just you know, just play the game. Yeah, that's it. Like, if you keep on thinking about what's going on, and the stuff that's happening right in the spot, and oh my god, this is changing, and oh my god, they get this, and oh my god, they get that, then it just sounds really whiny. I'm not saying that you are being whiny, but... What I'm saying is, 
you know, you will appreciate the game more if you don't worry about it. Those are my two things. Thanks, Andrew. Carlos Eduardo Ferreira Ramos says, Just man up and play the game. You are the best, Scarred. Yes, man up and play the game. It's just a game. Like, people are freaking out and burning their armies, you know, because of Age of Sigmar. Oh my god! It's the end of the world! Suck it up! <laughs> Don't burn, like, thousands of dollars worth of models. Rebase them! Play a new game! Sell the army! Dude! <laughs> and moving on. Um, my question is, when did you start playing 40k and how did you get into it? Played, started playing about 15 years ago, went to England, walked into the hobby shop, saw a third edition starter set, bought it, took it home, the rest is history. I talked about it the last couple episodes ago. Thanks for your question, Wolfus Gaming. Jeff Steinquist says, I'm relatively new to Dark Eldar. I've watched some of your videos, but not all. I'd like to know your take and the effectiveness of effectiveness of Helions or and then comparing them to the beast pack masters that are pretty much the exact same thing well I like the the Helions as a disruption unit I run about eight of them in a unit and I normally deep strike them and they die a horrible hideous death at the end of the game but they're great to just cause havoc and destruction the reason you use the beast masters is to stop dangerous terrain tests from happening but they, I uh, believe they lose hit and run. And, you know, they can all take power weapons and stuff. This is really preference. Personally, I built Helions, so I use Helions. And I own Helions, so I use Helions. But, you know, do whatever you want, really. Um, you know, try one out. If it doesn't work for you, try another one out. And if it doesn't work for you, sorry. But thank you for your question. Lynn Havard asks, how do you go about picking your color scheme? Um, it really depends on the paints I had. It's because I don't really like buying new paints. I just use what I have available. Low overhead, less expensive. What's your favorite Dark Eldar model looks and on the tabletop? Looks wise, I'm a big fan of the Incubi. I like the Incubi. I wish they were like some cool plastic pose models. And on the tabletop, my favorite Dark Eldar model, uh, an Archon when he's rolling well, <laughs> when the shadow field is working. Um, but thank you for your question, uh, Pat Story. Pierre Bradshaw, are you going to start collecting a new army soon? Um, no. Expensive-wise, no. I'm going to be continuing to revamp the armies I have, adding new units. Well, I did get some Harlequins, and I'll be adding the Harlequins to the Dark Elder army. So, um, you know, I, they're not built yet, but I have uh, one of the, um, like, Venom type things, a troop, and a Solitaire. I just need a Death Jester and a Shadow Seer, and uh, so, you know, the jet bikes, just so I can have a couple of things here and there to use. But thanks for your question, Pierre. Lewis Hosking. Just man up and play the game. Yeah, you're probably right, as this had me smiling. See, so look at me nod. Question. If you could add a brand new race to 40k, what would it be? How would they work? What would their objectives be? And how do you make them different from everything else? And most importantly, what would you call them? Uh, you can't include Skaven and other similar things from many years ago since they've been deleted. So don't choose squats, pretty much what you're saying. Um, or any of the other things in the fluff. If I were to pick a new race for 40k, um, probably a race of like rock golems or something, you know, that, that they were like an interstellar, like spanning galactic race, or they were part of like, you know, they caused the Big Bang or something. That'd be pretty cool. That they just caused the Big Bang and they exploded into a million pieces. So they're all over the galaxy and they have this sentient being and they're like titans, but I mean like, they're like mountains and rocks and they're just all over the place, like little golems. So, I don't know, uh, their objective would be to, mainly to protect the universe, I guess, or, you know, to create links between the different races or just, you know, mess around with people's psyche. I don't know, 
That's a good question. Um, thank you for your question, Lewis. Alex Mauro. Mere mortal, align your soul with a dark god. Who would you choose to both gameplays wise, Chaos Basement and Demon together, and fluff wise? Nurgle. Ever since the second edition, and I, I could have sworn I had taken it out, but ever since the, sec the second edition Chaos like Codex, with this big picture of Papa Nurgle, this all artwork, it was great, looked really nasty, and that inspired me, and ever since then, I think they're really cool. So, Nurgle. Um, but thank you for your question. Gary Younger. What kind of list do you prefer to run? Generalist or focused on one particular element of the game? Does it change based on who you play or at what point level? I like playing generalist armies that has a little bit of everything. I find playing armies that are very one-sided and one-dimensional, A, don't challenge me mentally, so they bore me, and B, they're boring to play, and C, they're boring to play, and they're boring to paint, and they're boring to collect. So I like having a bit of everything, even though, say, you know, if I was thinking about shooting infantry, it wouldn't be the same unit twice or four times. And, you know, it would be more like unit of Cabalite Warriors, Venom, Razorwing. You know, they all have, like, very strong anti-infantry capabilities, but it's in different ways. So you can kind of focus it that way, and then having different battlefield roles. There's a lot more depth to it than just me talking that way, but I prefer overall lists um hey there scardcast from mjad86 if i'm using a regular detachment uh not the homunculus coven book and bring the grotesque formation which wall or traits must i take and which power from pain table must i read because the dark ally book says to use its power from pain and wall or traits to use the attachments that it brings and on the homunculi coven it says to grab the attachment formation um so, <clears throat> if you're using a CAD, a combined arms attachment, you can use any one from the 40k, any warlord trait from the 40k rulebook, or your Dark Eldar warlord traits. If you're using a, the Dark Eldar formation, you can use any warlord trait you like, but you get a reroll on the, on the result if you're rolling on the Dark Eldar warlord trait table. Um, as for the coven, if you take a grotesquerie, the grotesquerie and their units within would use the power from pain from the coven book, whereas all the units in the combined arms attachment would use the power from pain from the book that you took it from. So even if you take like Rax and grotesques in that CAD taken from the Dark Eldar book, you'd have to use the power from pain from the Dark Eldar book, but then the grotesquerie would use the power from pain and all the other special rules from the Coven book, because it would use kind of like those rules. I hope that answers your question. But thank you for that question. Um, Steven Zabel. Hi, Skari, my question is this. What are your thoughts on the future of 40K and this channel? Are you anticipating any new releases or thinking about starting one of the new armies also? Would you ever attempt a witch cult star list spamming Reavers, other five men, witch units and venoms, hypermobile, and killy just the way you like it. Thank you for your question, Stephen. Um, new releases? Man, like, there's going to be tons. So I'm just going to take them as they go. Um, I can't really financially start a new army. If any of you has an army that you want to donate, let me know, and maybe I'll start it. I have a few Tyranids. Um, would you ever attempt a witch cult style list? Yes, I have been fiddling with a witch cult style list, running a succubus, units of witches, reavers, beast packs, helions, uh, razor wings, you know, and, and it's been fun. It's definitely a very different style list, but it has been a very fun list to kind of test and practice. We haven't put it on the channel because most of it isn't painted. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, could, I could make it work. It just means, it, just, it would just be practice. It'd be fun to play. But thanks for your question. Um, Wargamer Sean. Congrats on 6,000 subs. Thanks, Wargamer Sean. I've always respected and enjoyed your channel. Um, yes, make sure you check out Wargamer Sean's channel. So, Wargamer Sean. Um, question for you. I know there's been a lot of negative talk about 40k since Craft World Eldar. I'm very much against comp, and I like to play the rules as is. 
So for games with my friends, I think house rules are fine. However, for larger tournaments like ITC, I'm very much against them. How do you feel about comp as a whole? I love the ITC format because even though it changes a few things, when you go to an event, people know what they're walking into and there's no gray area about anything. It's like, this is what you're playing with. So if you're going to a competitive style event, I actually like there being some guidelines just so everybody's on the same page. As for friendly play, I don't care. Whatever goes. I, I honestly don't care. You could bring a Titan. You could bring, when you're playing me, bring a Titan, bring your Death Star of Doom, bring your nastiest meta competitive list that you want. I don't personally care because A, I enjoy any challenge that's thrown at me, and B, as long as it's painted, I don't care. But um, as for comp as a whole, I think it really helps in a like a very big competitive scene. Um, so everyone's on the same page in terms of what to expect, what not to expect. So there's no gray area, and it just cuts out a whole bunch of... You may agree with it, you may disagree with it, but when it comes to competitive play, I think having that, that structure really, really helps to keep everybody on the same page. But thank you for your question, Wargamer Sean, and everybody check out his channel. Okay. Blood 1998, if you lived in the 41st millennium, what race and what position do you think you would be? Um, I'd have to be an Archon. You know, I'm cunning and I'm arrogant and um, I am you know rely a lot on luck to win my games. Um, so, yeah, I think an Archon. Dark Elder, I kind of have to stick to that. But thank you for your question. Um... Jet Voidweller. Do you have a favorite Horace Heresy book? Um, not really. I just really enjoy the fact that they, they actually wrote, they're writing the Horace Heresy series because there's so much fluff and they filled in all the gaps that was, that they can't put into the main rule books. So, yeah, I really enjoyed the, one of the first two books when Horace gets stabbed or whatever and that's kind of when he becomes evil um, so that, that, I like that one, that one was pretty cool um, what do you think would be the best way, sorry thank you Jet Voidra, Johnny D what do you think would be the best way to get raiders into an Eldar list as they are lacking assault vehicles for their banshees the best way depends how many you need you can either take an allied contingent of Dark Eldar and put a raider in a fast attack slot. You can take a combined arms detachment of Dark Eldar and take three raiders in the fast attack slot, or you can take a real space raid detachment from the Dark Eldar Codex and take six raiders as fast attack slots, and then you can have as many units of Banshees and Striking Scorpions as your heart's content would desire, running out of armor 10 vehicles as their assault vehicles. Yeah, cool. Hey, thanks for the question, Johnny. Um, and that's it that would be the last question I went through a lot of them and I really appreciate you um, uh, listening, watching, commenting subbing and um, I want to give a shout out to everybody out there who enjoys the channel and sticks with me, I know not everyone watches the videos to the end so I'll be sending out the contest um, winners contest um, uh, this week to the people who won the contest. Um, make sure you check out the video if you haven't already. Like the Facebook page. Now, the channel is on a quest to hit 8,000 subscribers. We're almost halfway through 6,000 subscribers. If you like what you see, tell other people about it. Um, this is more of a personal goal. You know, I don't make any money off this or anything. It's just kind of cool. I, I enjoy it. Um, watching the videos, uh, because of work, my video content has shrunk, but I'm going to make sure that I'm posting at least something every week. I'm going to be doing a full tactical review of the next best thing than grilled cheese, which is the Craft World's book. So it'll be very in tone with my um, with my Dark Eldar review, if you haven't seen the Tactica series. And that's because I was doing an Astra Militarum one, and that one is on hiatus because I believe that James Workshop, I have a feeling they'll be switching up that book soon. So I'm going to do the Craftwood one first because of the longevity of that, that codex and the Tactica series will be longer. And then I might do the Harlequin one, and then I'll kind of revisit the Astra Militarum. 
But other than that, I do appreciate you watching, liking, subbing, and letting other people know that you can. Leave a comment down below if you'd like me to get to a question on my next Scary stuff. And this is your grateful host and pretty face, Scary, um, signing off, Scary out. And one last note, if you have any suggestions on things you'd like to see, um, ways that I could improve the channel, um, how would you recommend to, for me to um, create more of a following and more of a you know a, 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 a base for you guys? Uh, T-shirts? Do you like? Do you want to see scarred, scarred cast stuff? What games do you like to see? Demos? Um, just let me know. I'd really appreciate some feedback. Other than that, that's it. Scary.